Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to tackle the Justeran wing in my Sons of Horus army. I'm slowly working on my Sons of Horus and hopefully you've seen me painting the Sons of Horus Contemptor and the Infantry and I felt like I needed a little boost to my army so I thought it'd be quite fun to do the black armoured elements which are the Justeran Terminators and I also fancy doing another little dreadnought. There's a fantastic art, as I always go and reference, and it was the Sons of Horus Resin Contempt you can buy in the black, and I thought this would be really fun to go with my Praetor, and maybe they can uh, walk around together and probably get shot to pieces, but that's fine, they'll look cool doing it. I bought the Justera models from Forge World, but I also added some Dark Angels helmets, and I thought these gave them a slightly more updated evil look and they also matched the helmet in the Praetor a lot better I felt. So I added the little top knots and I used the plastic parts from the plastic cataphracty. I'm using uh, the lightning claw but as a power fist and I thought that better represents the Talon of Horus and it looks like a Baden's power fist. So I thought for Justeran specifically this was really cool. And I actually matched my Dreadnought's loadout to have a heavy bolter because uh, I felt it better matched the unit. So it's kind of cool. We've got Storm Bolter and Claw and on the Dreadnought we've got a heavy bolter and Claw as well. It's probably not the best choice to uh, win but uh, I think it looks really cool. So yeah, I was really happy with uh, using those Dark Angels heads. And these models are a bit old now so I had to go for some Tactical Rocks on every single one so the Mark VI aren't taller than these guys which are supposed to be enormous. I started with Colour Forge Matte Black Primer and any black primer is good because I'm going to matte varnish anyway but yeah I really like this primer. And I'm going to start with the red so we can mask that off. You could of course paint the shoulder pads separately but I think it's pretty quick to mask it so I was happy doing this. So I'm airbrushing with Corn Red here and I'm actually going straight over the black as opposed to a pre-highlight we might do. And that's because I want these reds to stay reasonably dull, not a powerful, vibrant red, as I think I want them to be a bit more grim, dark, and evil feeling. I also sprayed some of the eyes and details on the Dreadnought, because why not? It would be easy to mask, and just having a nice thin base coat would uh, help out later on. Most of the demonstrations I do, I'm going to do on the Dreadnought because it's easier for you to see, it's easier for me to film because it's just like a big Terminator, but I'm basically doing them all at the same time as it's the same process. Now I'm going to airbrush a lighter red, and instead of going to something like Mephiston, which is the obvious step up, I actually mix Evil Suns and Corn Red together, and this makes a slightly colder, not quite as rich red, uh, which is what I'm looking for in this red tone. I don't want it to be particularly vibrant at all. You could make it really desaturated and use something like Wazdaka Red. Uh, that's even more uh, dull than Evil Suns. But I thought mixing Evil Suns and Corn Red is a colour I prefer to Mephiston, actually. I really like how this red looks, but I don't want it to be too vibrant and sort of take away from the red, so a really important step is to go back to the shadow colour, the corn red, and we'll airbrush that from below. So all the highlights we tried to do in the right place, but it's inevitable we won't get those highlights quite fine enough. So I changed the angle I'm spraying the airbrush so I don't hit the parts where I want it to stay light, but I basically dull it back down and knock the colours, and this process is something I do in pretty much everything I'm painting. So I build the highlights up, but I love to go back to the shadows, and I either glaze it with the brush, or in this case, when we're army painting, I love to use the airbrush because obviously it's fast. And here I'm just building up the corn red, really nice and diluted, until I knock back the red enough that it's got the right balance of impact, but it's not super overpowering. I quickly mask off with some blue tack. You can get some proper putty for this, but blue tack's fine. I did actually gloss varnish it just to protect it from the blue tack in case it's stuck a little too well and now I'm just airbrushing in with some model air black and I'll go over the whole model in black actually just to get in all the, the little recesses that the primer might have missed. So I'm going to start with the black highlights now and I got the recipe right when I did the Praetor so I'm just going to do the same thing and I'm starting off with scale 75 eclipse grey and this is just a kind of really dark 
nice grey and there's plenty of other alternatives but it's just the one I like. It's got a very matte finish but this isn't super important because I will be matte varnishing. But I do like the tone of Eclipse Grey uh, so yeah it's one of my favourites. But just use any other dark grey if you don't have it. My next highlight is Mechanicus Standard Grey. So yeah, hopefully you've all got this one, nice one from Games Workshop. And I just try and do the smallest highlights I can. And just like with the red, I'm not too worried if I don't get them perfect because I can get the black and tune up the size of those highlights later on. I do try and concentrate on the front areas. And if you look back at the artwork, they put a lot of highlighting around the front to draw focus. I think it's quite difficult to replicate this with the airbrush because even if you're a fantastic airbrusher, you can't get quite right the exact volumes you need for this sort of thing. I added some brighter highlights by adding in some medium grey to the standard Mechanicus. And I think this was probably a mistake when doing it with the airbrush as I covered a quite a large area and it was just too grey. It looked cool but it didn't really feel like black anymore and actually when I was kind of halfway through base coating the gold and stuff I did go back in with the airbrush and spray a lot more black over it. So I'd probably stop airbrushing at the standard Mechanicus Grey, it's definitely enough contrast which of course is down to taste but I would advise that this is probably enough. When I did the Prey Tour I did it by hand, all of the black and that gave me way more precise control and I did take these highlights up nice and bright but that's because I could fit them in a very small space where there's, when I'm just airbrushing then yeah I can't really do that. I'm trying to do these in a week, these models, so I kind of want to stick to just the airbrush. If I get into painting by hand all the highlights then I just won't get them done. Here you can see on the Terminator I'm going back in with the black and I just spray from either side of the highlight and it trims that highlight down so it's much thinner and I think this is a really nice way of doing it because if you try and get the perfect highlights just building up with the airbrush if you make any mistake then it's kind of frustrating but going back in and shading again is just a, a nicer way to do it. I then remove the blue tack which comes off quite easy because I gloss varnished the uh, pads and you can see what I mean I definitely push the highlights a bit too far and it's just looking a little bit grey so yeah I should have left it with the uh, Mechanica standard grey and really put a lot of black back in but I did manage to do it later on uh, so randomly you'll see it get a lot darker later on. After you removed any masking and you're happy with the black and red give the entire model a really heavy gloss varnish. This will protect it from any oil paints or anything we do later on but it also gets it ready for the decal process. And we've done this in a video before, so if you want to know how to do transfers, please check this one out. But I just went through that normal process with the Microset and Microsole and left that overnight. The next day I gave it another heavy gloss varnish and that's important. Um, I've kind of skipped this step before and that's when you can get some misting. I think when you haven't sealed any of those chemicals like Microset. So yeah, I did the gloss varnish and then finally I went for some AK ultra matte varnish. Now this comes with a, a little word of caution because your blacks won't look very black when it's ultra matte and personally that's a look I really like. I just like everything to be really matte but of course it does feel more grey and I made the mistake of over highlighting so it did feel really grey but it's kind of down to you whether you like it a satin finish which makes seeing the blacks look deeper but I just like everything to look matte. I think it's cool. And now I begin the most time consuming process which is doing the chipping and I like to do the chipping by hand it just feels like it gives me the most control and I used burnt umber for this from scale 75. I would recommend using something like brown leather from scale 75 because it has a little more orange in and it's a little bit paler and this can show up on the black if you want it to be less subtle. I was quite happy with it being subtle, it shows up really well on these highlight areas but when you go into the deeper blacks you can't quite see it but it is there and I was happy enough with that to be honest. You could do a variety of chip colours, so some slightly more orange and some just plain dark like this. And you can also do chips with just plain black when it's in the highlights and then some paler grey scratches. I just worked around in the burnt umber first of all everywhere 
and then you can add a variety of different ones later if you feel like it. I painted all the leather straps in the same colour, the burnt umber, and I highlighted these with goby brown. Later on, when we look at the finished thing, I do think I should have done these red, and it's something I might actually go back and change later. At the time, I was worried there would be too much red and it would be overpowering, but again, later on, we'll compare it to the Cataphracti Praetor I did, and maybe I'll make some changes to make it work with that. I wanted to get all of the matte elements out the way before moving on to metallics in case I wanted to ultra matte the whole thing again and I really don't want to hit my metallics with the ultra matte. So I started working on the eye lenses and there was loads of cool sort of eye symbols on the dreadnought so it's a good opportunity to make these look really cool. So I built up first of all with Evil Sun's Scarlet and I could afford to make these nice and bright because they're much smaller. If the shoulder pad was bright, then I think it's too large and will be overpowering. But with the little lenses, we can push these. I then highlighted with Wild Rider Red. So I wanted to try a different recipe than the orange I'd used in the previous videos, just to see how it turned out. And this will be slightly colder because we're using the Wild Rider. When I did my previous eye lenses, I found the Vallejo Golden Yellow to just be an amazing paint. It was really opaque and nice to use. So I mixed this with the Wild Rider for the highlights. And this gave a lot of impact and had like a nice little glow to this central eye, which I think was really cool. And it matches the artwork fairly well, so I was pretty happy with that. I did a few glazes with the Evil Suns and then the Corn Red, just to try and blend these things in. I think it's worth spending the extra time on lenses, as they are quite a focus. On this black, it really stands out, so it was worth making these look really nice. With the matte elements out of the way, I was pretty happy as I knew I just had the metallics to go. So I had a really nice recipe that I've used for the gold and all my Sons of Horus so far. And it's really simple, just starting with a base coat of decayed metal. And I took my time to get a really smooth base coat. So I mixed a decent amount of water and just really carefully applied this. I think that's the key with metallics is don't worry about doing too many steps just make sure they're applied nicely because if they get gloopy they just don't look good so a couple thin coats nicely applied that's the way i think to handle metallics it's a big jump going straight from decayed metal to the peridot alchemy and i love the peridot alchemy because of its green tone so i actually did a couple mixes decayed metal with a little bit of peridot and then decayed metal with some more before I did the highlight of pure Peridot Alchemy. I used that very sparingly actually, but it was a really nice, not too in your face gold, uh, sort of almost bronze, and I really like this look. And because there's some nice green in the Peridot Alchemy, it does contrast nicely with the red, but not like a, a horrible, really stark contrast. In some parts, I edge highlighted with the metallics, but then areas that were kind of following the light that I'd painted on the black, I made sure I did big area highlights for these. And then later on in these parts, I would use the Peridot Alchemy. This helps to draw focus and make sure your metallics match up with any of the highlighting you've done on the matte areas. I found myself at this point not super happy with how it was looking, especially the black, and I just felt it was a little lifeless. Uh, so I actually did an oil wash, which was all over, just to change the tone and get a little bit of grit into the recesses. I would recommend doing this after the silver, but I was just desperate to get an oil wash at this point to see if I was happy with the black. And it really does make a difference because it clings to all the rivets, you get a little bit of dirt in the recesses. So it did change the look of the black and I was happy after I'd done the oil wash. But you'll see me do the silvers, and I would do all the silvers uh, first because the oil looks fantastic over the silver. So I kind of did this to make sure I was happy, did all the silvers, and I had to repeat the process and do a, another oil wash, which was fine, but I'm just saying why I did it in this weird order. I was just a little paranoid it wasn't going to work out how I wanted. All the silver parts are just iron warriors, and some of the bits got a little bit of a highlight of chrome, but most of it I just did flat iron warriors and then a wash of the oil paint. Now the most important thing to do with the silver, I think on black, is to add scratches. So I did a lot of chipping with the brown and then sparingly I did some very sharp highlights, almost like edge highlighting with the silvers. 
and this really changed the look of the black. Before the oil wash and before this, I just wasn't satisfied with it because it just didn't have enough detail or information on it. But the oil paint adds sort of dirt in the crevices and the silver does the same thing as edge highlighting as it defines parts and it just makes them stand out. So I kind of cheated and I did the silver chips where I wanted to draw attention, like on the corners, the very front of the dreadnought around the head and things like that. But it's super effective. I like to think of the brown chips as really old ones and then the silver as where it's kind of just fresh and, and it's just happened. I know a lot of people would say on Space Marine armor this wouldn't happen because it can't rust. But I'm not really too worried about that because I just think it looks awesome and uh, I really like doing this style of weathering effect. I was thinking about the heavy bolter and how it's always painted with lots of silver parts and I just didn't really want to do that. And then looking at just things like normal machine guns, then they're pretty much always black, but they do sometimes have little chips where it's worn away. And, and that's the look I wanted for both the black armor and the heavy bolter. So maybe it seems like a lazy option for the heavy bolter, but what I found was to make it look good, I needed to do lots of chips with the detail brush, lots of sharp marks and the oil wash was super important. So actually it still took a lot of time and probably doing some parts silver would have been faster, but I really like the stealthy look of having this all black uh, heavy bolter. Just make sure you do lots of different layers of subtle weathering effects. And I think it can look really cool and a bit different to what everyone else does with their weapons. So that is actually every process I did for these models. So they're fairly simple in terms of how many processes there are, but I guess you've basically got red, black and gold and there's there's nothing else. I didn't want a lot of variety. I wanted these to feel, you know, functional and, and grim dark and just fit with everything else I'd done the rest of my army. And apart from the green, I'm really keeping things simple. And so, yeah, it was kind of the same for this model. I think that it's fine to not have very many processes and just to take your time and do things like the chipping. Every video I've been doing recently, I'm saying spend your time on the chipping. And that really is... Uh, what I think makes these minis look good because you can save time by doing some simple airbrush highlights but then do a lot of weathering effects on that and I think you can make the models look really really cool. I'm happy with the Dreadnought but I must admit I'm not very satisfied with how the Terminators turned out and I think that's because I'm comparing them to my Cataphracty Praetor. So I gave myself one week to do all of these Terminators and the Dreadnought and for me, that's very, very quick. I don't paint every day and I, you know, just get a few hours in the evenings, normally after work. And so this was a little bit tight. Obviously, I had this deadline because I like to put out content every week. And that was kind of the main reason. But also, I need to get this army done. So it was nice to have that deadline and, and make me get this finished. When I did the Praetor, I spent two whole weeks on it. Uh, so... It's kind of no wonder that it's better. I spent two weeks on one figure as opposed to one week on five figures and the Dreadnought. I think it was good of me to show that discipline and really paint them in an army painting style because you can't afford to spend two weeks on a model like I did uh, with the Praetor on the infantry. Otherwise, it's never going to happen. And I, in the past, have started armies and not got them right. So this is the compromise. Maybe later on, I could actually add a few more highlights and some details to the Just Aaron. They are finished for now, but I would like to, yeah, just add a little bit more work, probably highlight the red a little better, add a little more weathering and a few more chips as I was quite sparing with those. We also had the crazy, horrible heat wave, um, which people not in England <laughs> in hot countries will be like, what you're talking about but my house was just absolutely boiling when I was painting these and my paint was drying on my brush and it was just really tough so that tight deadline together with the fact my paint just wouldn't stay wet made it quite tough but I am happy these are done so I think I'll put them away for a little while and maybe I just need to get the army done and I could come back and uh, add some extra work for these. I hope you enjoyed it anyway and maybe you've got some ways to paint black that's fairly simple and uh, learn a couple new weathering effects or just how to weather black and I just hope you like the final result anyway. 
The biggest takeaway for me was having, you know, the brown oil paint dry in the recesses of black really helped to pick out those recesses. And normally, you know, you could just paint them dark, but I think with black, it's actually nice to have them light and that picks them out. And the other thing was those silver scratches and chips instead of edge highlights, but to make it look like it's weathered, but they still help to draw that focus and give detail to something that could otherwise be a little bit boring. Anyway, I could ramble on for a long time as usual, but I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you enjoyed seeing me make a little bit of progress with this army. I'm still painting those 40 Marines doing the black, but I'm way over halfway. I think I've done 24 out of 40 with blocking in the black, so we're still going with it and I really hope that I can do an update that's quite significant in the future. Anyway, uh, looking forward to reading your comments and I hope we've got some Sons of Horus collectors out there that are going to do something similar. See you next time.